I'm out at the field today and wanted to show you what's basically a culmination of things that I've talked about on my channel recently. So you can see in front of me, I have this work in progress downward facing camera mount for the Canon SX260. And I have Droid Planner running on my Samsung Galaxy Tab 3. And this is the Bluetooth bridge that connects with the Galaxy Tab and sends and receives telemetry through the 3DR radio. And what I'll do with Droid Planner is create a survey polygon and map out a mission that covers about 25 to 30 acres. We'll take the hexacopter up with CHDK running on the cannon on a two second interval. Then we'll pull the images and run them through PIX4D. Okay, you can see the blue dot is our location. The H is the home location of the hexa. For our first waypoint, we have a takeoff. And what I'll do right now is I'm just gonna do this small area right here. So I'm gonna go into polygon mode. I'm going to draw Then I'm gonna go ahead and select, and you can see Survey Polygon. Now what's cool about Droid Planner is they have a bunch of profiles loaded, so we're flying with the SX260. I'll go ahead and select that. And our hatch angle, that's really dependent on the wind, which way we wanna be flying, but I'm gonna leave that at the default of zero. Flight altitude, I actually wanna take that up to about 60 meters. Okay, overlap. That's a decent overlap, 50%. I might bump that up just a little bit so we get more images with more overlap. So we'll do 60% side lap, bump that up a little bit more to, let's say 70%. Then I'll just click off of that. The hex is powered up. Now I'll go ahead and connect to Droid Planner. And what I'll do first is I'll go ahead and power up our Bluetooth module. See that we're broadcasting with that red LED. Now let's go ahead and connect. So I'll select connect and it should pair with our Bluetooth module. Voting for waypoint zero. Okay, so now we're connected. Let me go ahead and just add one more waypoint here. It's waypoint number three. And for that, I'll just have it do a land operation. Now let's go ahead and send this mission to the hexacopter. Waypoint saved to drone. Okay, the other thing that I like to do before I actually take off, what I'm going to do is load the mission from the hexacopter and it'll actually show all our waypoints. Waypoints received. And you can see there are about 14 of them, where one is the takeoff and then 14 is our land command and in between we're going to be flying these waypoints at 60 meters. Let me point out one other thing, I always fly with my Tyrannus even though we're in auto mode and looking at telemetry from Droid Planner, I always want to make sure that I'm able to take over. This is stabilized mode. Now let me show you. We're not armed, we're still on the ground. I'm going to switch into auto. Mode auto. And you can hear that Droid Planner echoes back mode the mode that we're in. You can see some of our telemetry here. We have good satellite coverage and 99% battery. That's obviously crucial. I always keep an eye on that. Today I'm flying with the 3S which should be sufficient for this mission. Okay, we're getting ready to roll. I have CHDK initiated. I actually have a 60 second delay before it starts taking photos on a two second interval. Going to arm, and then I'm gonna to toggle into auto mode. So we just hit waypoint number two, and now it's just gonna kind of sweep across the field. Droid Planner's doing a nice job of keeping us updated. Going for waypoint five. On waypoints, position, battery strength. Waypoint six. Building for waypoint seven. Nice and stable. CHDK should have an easy job of getting good photos on this mission. So we're about waypoint 11, there are 14 waypoints. Building for waypoint 12. Fail safe. Building for waypoint 13. Building for waypoint 14.
So mission accomplished. One just tip when you're landing, obviously you want to make sure that you're landing on a flat spot. My I had that landing waypoint kind of on the edge of that ridge over there, so I took over in stabilized mode. The other tip is make sure that you're prepared to throttle. I was down a little bit on throttle and when I flipped into stabilized mode, this thing descended quickly and I gave it enough throttle to keep it from hitting the ground. And you can see the mission that we flew. The great thing about Droid Planner, it actually saves this telemetry data onto the device so we can easily, just like with Mission Planner on the desktop, be able to pull that data and analyze it. And let me just add that I've been flying a lot with Droid Planner lately. I've been able to leave my MacBook at home, which is great now that I... Data link lost. Check connection. Okay, let's go ahead and disconnect. I had powered down the Hexa, that's why she was complaining that the data link was lost. But I've been able to do a lot. You can see that Droid Planner is a pretty robust ground station to be able to run on your Android tablet or mobile device. So I'm going to head back to the garage. I'll pull these images and then I'll do a follow-up video that shows how I process them in Pix4D. And I know this camera mount looks a little bit jerry-rigged and that's probably because it is. I 3D printed these Taro mounting brackets and was exploring with different ways of mounting a Canon camera mainly to be able to mount multiple cameras. So hence the rubber bands definitely still a work in progress. And when I get to something I really like I'll definitely be sharing it on Thingiverse, but want to see if there's any blur and if the images are stable and how everything turned out. So just wanted to share what I've been doing with Droid Planner lately. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it's kind of a culmination of stuff I've been working on. This Bluetooth bridge, CHDK, the Tyrannus, obviously Droid Planner. I have to say we live in pretty exciting times to be able to put all these together and to get out to the field and do aerial mapping or surveying. I definitely have plans to do more in-depth coverage of the functionality of Droid Planner as well as processing imagery in PIX4D. So I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them below. Until next time, thanks for watching.